The solar eclipse. All right. Here we go. Mm hmm Uh-huh. Tom Thomas! What's that for? There's a solar eclipse today. Look, and I'm gonna watch it. That's so cool. And what do you need the box for? Simka, did you forget? It's dangerous to look straight into the sun. Huh? It's so dark. How long until it starts to get dark? Half an hour. We'd be happy to help you out with that, wouldn't we? Only one thing I don't get. The light will be gone? Like, gone forever? <laughs> How did you come up with that? There have been plenty of eclipses before this one. In outer space, everything is in a state of constant movement. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. Sometimes the Moon gets in between the Sun and the Earth and covers the Sun. And so, for a little while, the Sun no longer appears as a bright glowing sphere, but a simple black ball. <laughs> This phenomenon is called a solar eclipse. But a solar eclipse can only be seen by humans and fixies that are in its shadow while it's happening. But anything can happen. Like, what if something gets stuck? Then, would it stay dark forever? And when has that ever happened? It's happening now! No, look. Either help us out or stop bothering us. All right, look. This is the Earth, here, and the Moon, there. The flashlight's our sun. <laughs> you see? The Moon's shadow falls on the Earth. And now watch. When the Moon starts to go, the light comes back. <laughs> Did it get stuck? Just like I said, the end is near the end of the light. It's just that someone should be more careful with the glue. It's possible to take an ordinary box and make a special device that was invented by people long ago. It's called a camera obscura. This clever invention was used by artists as well as scientists. It was the basis for the very first photo cameras. It's quite easy to make your own camera obscura. Cut out a small square on one side of a box, cover it with aluminum foil, and poke a little hole in the center of it. Put a sheet of paper on the opposite side. The light will pass through the hole and shine through the darkness. And on that screen, you'll see the eclipse, only it will appear upside down. To see it, you'll need to look at it from above, but make sure not to let extra light in. Beautiful. And remember to be careful with those scissors. But don't you understand that it's scary in the dark? And it's impossible to live in it. Don't be a coward. You glow in the dark. But what about Tom Thomas? Is he going to have to walk like this? Ah! Uh. You'll be able to light up the way for him. And if I run out of juice? I'll use my flashlight. And when the batteries run out? Relax, I'll find more. In the dark? No. We have to get prepared right now. Can you see the sun? Uh-huh. One minute left. You ready? A minute? What? Hold on. I'm not ready yet. I'll get charged a little more. No, I need to get those batteries. Ten seconds. Nine seconds. Eight seconds. What should I do? Six. What should I do? Five. Ah! Four. Three. Two. Marcia. Here it goes. Whoa. <gasps> it's totally beautiful. Nola, come on out. You'll miss everything. It's amazing. Class, it's so awesome that we did this. Look, look. Now the sun's coming back out. Show it to me. It really didn't get stuck. You mean the whole eclipse is done? It was cool, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Only I missed the whole thing. <sighs> well, you'll see the next one, right? If you don't get spooked again. 
You're not going to throw the box away, are you? I'll save it for you. I can use it to store something useful. Batteries, for instance. What if tomorrow's the end of the light and Nolik's not ready for it? <laughs> <laughs> the time machine. Oh, wow. What kind of device is that? Maybe an alarm clock? No, this is a time machine. Beep, 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 beep. Time machines, they don't exist. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. I learned that, studied that. Well done, Tula. Oh. Oh. What did I just bump into? What do you mean, what? Into a time machine. But I thought time machines aren't for real. Of course they are. You get in and take off for the future. Or the past. Splendid. Lots of us would love to be able to travel in a time machine. Maybe to go back in time and fix a bad grade. Or to get a peek into the future. Of course it would be interesting. But time travel isn't possible. And thank goodness! Just imagine how mixed up everything could get. Someone brings back a dinosaur from the past, while someone else brings aliens from the future. No one would need to invent anything. Appliances would sit unused, and fixies would have no work to do. It's awful! So you've got no idea of the answer. I studied this, but I don't remember. Too bad, because tomorrow we've got a hard test. Make sure you're prepared. I'm sure I'm gonna fail. You're gonna pass? You studied all of this, right? So? So you just need to stop worrying so much, that's all. I wish I could. <laughs> Poor girl. How can we help her? Hey, I know how. This morning, Tula believed that that thing over there is a real time machine. Sounds like an anti-scientific plan. Stop worrying. It's simple. We'll send you to tomorrow. You'll sit down, take the test, and come right back here. I wish I could go. It's like a dress rehearsal. The main thing's not to worry. Then what do I do? Uh, you just pull on that wire and you'll get them back. Well, time to go. Wow, it's tomorrow. Hi there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Grandpus got sick, so I'll be giving you your tests. I'm scared. Don't worry. It's just a rehearsal. Well then, who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! Oh, so cool! Awesome! That wasn't scary at all. Impressive! By the way, what's wrong with the professor? Uh, Grandpus! Uh, you know, don't you? A bolt fell on his head. You dropped it, remember? I did? Yeah, yesterday. I'm not sure I like this future. Well, how did it go there? Later. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Oh! Leave this on until tomorrow. What is this? Come back! No! If I do, I could hurt you! Me? What for? Wouldn't it be incredible to travel into the future and see what you will become? Unfortunately, that's only possible in our dreams. But if you have a dream and aren't afraid of challenges and setbacks, your future can turn out just the way you imagined. Do you want to become a champion? Then you need to start your training right away. Do you dream of becoming the best programmer in the world? Then first pull up that grade in math class. Do you dream of sailing the oceans? Then you'll need to do a lot of reading because a captain has so much he needs to learn. Start creating your future right now. And we Fixies will be right there to help you, making sure the machines you need to reach your dreams will keep on working for years and years to come. Hey there, are you ready? Uh-huh. So far, everything's exactly the same. Tula, take this, please. It worked. And pass out the tests. You may begin. These questions are different. Who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! What am I worried about? I know everything is going to be fine. Tish! Oh, uh, well then. All of your test results are great. <sighs> Only none of you could guess what this device is. What do you mean? Isn't it a time?
time machine? <laughs> no, it's for <laughs> automatically watering plants, that's all. You see? Cool, right? Wow, it's fantastic. So hang on, you guys tricked me? But you passed the test, right? Well, all right. Then I forgive you. <laughs> the helicopter. It's very important, and I need your advice. Hey, uh, sorry I'm late. Oh, girls, I can hardly wait to see this. Here it goes. Hey there. Where did you get a helicopter? Professor Eugene, you threw it away, but we, we fixed it. Come fly with us. Hop in. There's no way. We're busy. Doing what? Something important. Go find somewhere else to fly. You got it. No problem. Now back to our job. fly with the help of propellers. The biggest one is called the main rotor blade. When the engine turns it, the rotor pushes the air with such a powerful force that it lifts the helicopter up off the ground. Of course, helicopters can't fly as fast as airplanes, but they have the ability to easily land on a small patch of ground. And unlike airplanes, helicopters can hover in the air for a long time and even fly backwards. Digit, turn us to the left. Huh? Woo! Uh. Now, turn right and higher. Huh? Digit, uh. Fire and Nolik are being dopey, but you're smart enough to know it's dangerous. Just land it. Hang on, hang on. This is one amazing rotor-driven machine. Leonardo da Vinci himself had a design for one, and now look who's controlling it. It really is impressive. You're a total ace on that controller. And so smart. And brave. <laughs> the girls really like boys like that. That's how I roll. Sure, yeah, you're great. Now land it. Digit! <laughs> oh! Ah! The wall! <sighs> no, like, don't panic. We're gonna have to jump! Whoa! What about me? Ah! 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 Where's fire? Here! You could have crashed! And if it wasn't for us... If it wasn't for you, just our pilot, everything would have been okay. A real pilot, you know, shouldn't get distracted. And first he has to learn how to fly on a simulator. Right, Digit? Uh-huh. That's true, but we don't have one. Don't go anywhere. Airplanes, helicopters, trains, and even cars are complicated machines that can be a challenge to navigate. And if you don't watch what you're doing, you can easily end up having an accident. That's why future pilots, train operators, and drivers all take comprehensive training classes that include learning how to fly a plane or drive a train using simulators. This, for instance, is an exact copy of a cockpit, only without wings and with screens for windows. You pull the controller and the cabin moves the way it would if you were actually taking off. And on the screens, the Earth is racing under the clouds. It takes your breath away. Commercial pilots are required to take part in many simulations like this before they're allowed to pilot a real airplane. Our pilot simulator is ready to go. Oh, wow. And I'll be the first one to try it. Here we go. Ah, uh, kids. Right, Dave? 
Bridget? <coughs> I'm only going over there just to take a look. Uh, you know how those two can behave. I'll just it's watch my them. Turn again. Hey, wait! It's my turn now! Boys are just silly. They're never serious. They just joke around. <gasps> Speaking of serious, we have some important business to take care of. <gasps> You're right! I can't figure out where I should put them. What about on the pack mat Oh, that's a very serious problem. Yeah. This is really important, not something silly like those boys are doing. 92, the wheel. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. And 101, 102, 103, 104, oh, I forgot. and 100 and... No, Lick! Hey, come on! Tom Tom has promised to give me a ride outside on his bicycle. I gotta get going. Lucky you. I'd love to ride on a bike. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. You're not allowed to go. Why can't we? Tom Thomas isn't your friend, all right? He only invited me. If you want to take a ride on a bicycle, then go find your own human friend to invite you. Well, Tom Thomas, you ready to go? We can't. There's no way we can ride this. The tire's got a hole. I try to fill it, but the air comes out. Well, then what should we do? I thought you'd know what. You're the fixie here. We, I mean, I didn't study it yet. Hang on! Tula, did you? Wait a sec. We found a hole in one of the tires of the bicycle. Hmm. You mean the one that only gives rides to friends? Don't be like that. Please help me out. I thought Tom Thomas was only a friend of yours. Uh, why don't you go and ask him yourself? He could be your friend, too. For thousands of years, wheels have been helping people all over the world. The wheel's ancestor is a lock. People would put logs under heavy loads to move them. Then people came up with the idea of slicing the log and connecting the slices with an axle. And there it was, the wheel. Wheels made life more convenient. Later came wheels with spokes, metal rims, and rubber tires. Soon people were wheeling around the world in and on all sorts of vehicles. Potters, mills, clocks. There are just so many different uses for a wheel. And with the steam train, steamboat, and cars, wheels spread all over the world. They even reached the planet Mars. The wheel really is one of the simplest and yet most amazing of all human inventions. Whew, it's off. So what's next? Now you take out the inner tube. You mean this rubber thing? Yeah, that's your inner tube. There's a hole there somewhere. Pump it up, Tom Thomas. Then we can see where the air is coming out. <laughs> that's not a good way to find the hole, Nolik. Why isn't it good? Because the hole might be really tiny. Then how do you find it? To find it, we need water. How come? Yeah, how come? Now I get why we need water. There! See those tiny bubbles? Yeah, do you see them? That's the air from inside of the tube. That means the hole is right there. Nolik, you're a genius. Hooray! Here's the hole I found. Look! Will you let me put on the glue? In my pack of mat I have just the right kind for this. The hole is right here, right where I found it. But first, we have to make sure that the rubber is dry. Looks like it's dry. Then let's put the glue on. It's all fixed. Finish! All right, it's ready to go. Hooray! Digit Tula, you coming with us? I don't know. We weren't invited. I'm sure he'll invite you. Right, Tom Thomas? Of course I will. We're friends, aren't we?
<laughs> the copy. Elisa! Don't worry, I found it. Uh, no, I didn't find it. Elisa! Elisa! I hear you! I'm coming, Professor Eugenius. Have you seen this umbrella anywhere? Looks like the professor lost his umbrella again. <gasps> More than one? Look at all these flyers. No, like, they're all copies of one flyer. Elisa prints lots of them so she can hang them up all over town. A copier is a device for making multiple copies of a single picture or document. An image that needs to be copied is placed on a piece of glass under a lid. The photocopier shines a bright light on it so it can take a clear picture. Then the image is printed onto paper with the help of special ink and a rotating drum. This way, you can make identical copies over and over again from one original until the ink or the paper runs out. What happened, Professor Eugenius? Oh, oh I, my briefcase, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, you're so absent-minded. First it was the umbrella, now it's the briefcase. Oh, is that for me? I don't do it on purpose. Well, we'll find your briefcase. I'll go design a new flyer for that, and I'll print those out, too. Ah, I just remembered. Remembered where you left your briefcase? Not that. This morning, I forgot to drink my tea. <laughs> so we need to find your tea as well. It's so dark inside of here. Quiet! Elisa's coming out. We have to hide. <laughs> Where is that one about the briefcase? Here's the flyer for missing keys, the one for the phone, the flyer for when the professor gets lost. Here, a missing briefcase. Excellent. Looks like she's gone for now. And where is Nolik? There's Nolik, in printed form. He got stuck inside the copier. We have to go and save him. Save him? We all need to be saved, Tula. If Elisa takes these flyers and hangs them up, the whole city will find out about Fixies. So what do we do then? Wait, uh... Oh, we can use those liquid erasers to paint over Nolik. Here comes another one. Make sure he's covered. And here. Not everybody has the opportunity to enjoy seeing the paintings of the great masters. But thanks to copying technology, these pictures are well known all over the world. Young artists and sculptors can learn their craft by studying and copying the great art line of the past. It's good to have copies of important documents, just in case. What if the original of a document happens to get destroyed? At least, there will be a copy. Copies are generally very helpful, but not all copies are good. Some copies called forgeries are bad. A forgery is a copy of a picture, document, or even money that is presented as the original. Making forged copies is illegal. You can even be sent to jail for making copies like that. And a little bit here. so that humans won't find out about Fixies. It's a shame I wasn't there. I could have helped you out with that. Professor! I'm leaving! <sighs> there they are! <laughs> Elisa! 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 She just left to hang up the flyers. Yeah? And I found the briefcase in the umbrella myself. I have to call her and tell her. Uh, 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 where's my phone? Have I really lost it? Don't you worry, Professor. 
If you can't find it, Elisa's got a flyer for your phone already. <laughs> What's important right now is that Elisa doesn't go missing. <laughs> Fasteners. And of course, all of the appliance's parts must be fastened good and tight. What are you doing, colleague? Today, Elisa is returning from her vacation. And so, I decided before she gets back, I'll clean up the laboratory. Quite a noble initiative. Now, where was I? You were saying all parts have to be fastened. <laughs> You're right. And what kinds of fasteners can you name? Fire? Uh, a screw? Mm-hmm. And what else? Uh, another screw? <laughs> that would make... A total of two screws altogether. Simka? To fasten wood or plastic parts together, you can use nails. Nails are hammered in with a hammer. In metal or stone, you need to first drill holes for the screws. To help a screw hold better, it can be inserted into a special fastener called an anchor or wall plug. The difference between a machine screw and a wood screw is that wood screws have pointy ends. Machine screws go into holes that already have a thread, or into a nut. And what if there aren't any screws or nails around? Well, then a fixie can turn himself into a screw and screw himself in, like this. Masterfully done. Fire, think you can do it? Of course. Yeah! Nolik? Is it okay? If I won't go... What do you mean, you won't go? <sighs> Wait, I started on the wrong foot. Uh, no, I, I guess it was the right one. Don't be scared. You've done this a thousand times. Uh-huh. You're right. You had to make sure the appliance was turned off first. <sighs> yeah, I should have. This time it's not going to happen to you. It's all under control. Go on. I'm still scared to do it. How about you try again? And who came up with this dumb screw idea? According to legend, the screw was invented in ancient times by the great Archimedes. Using his screw-tight mechanism, Archimedes built a special machine for getting water out of a canal. In ancient Rome, people used wooden screws and presses to squeeze the olive oil out of olives. Screws were also used as parts of drills or as lifting jacks. But the use of screws as fasteners did not begin until the 15th century. Soon thereafter, screws became so popular that today it's almost impossible to find an appliance made without one. And if one of these little screws should fall out, we fixies will come to the rescue. Because we don't just turn into screws when we need to hide from humans. We're always ready to do it when help is needed. Nolik, let's try it together. Don't be scared. We're here with you. Ready? And... <laughs> uh. Nolik, watch me, son. I haven't screwed myself in in over a hundred years, but I'm not scared. <laughs> Did you see that? It's a piece of cake. Grandpus? I'm stuck. It's all my fault. There's no need to worry. Professor Eugenius, can you help us unscrew Grandpus? I'll be right with you. It got a bit rusty. It's probably old age. I know what will help. A drop of oil. Ow! Oh. Oh. Professor Eugenius, are you okay? I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Look out! It's going to fall! We need to fasten the shelf to the wall! <laughs> no, like, help! We can't do this without you! Simka, I'm scared too. Nolik, save me! What's going on out there? No big deal, colleague. I just got a little bit buried. <clears throat> Will anyone unscrew me? I wish I could. And we're holding up the shelf. 
and Nolik? Me too. I did it. I screwed myself in. Well done, Nolik. I knew you could. And who's going to help us now? Elisa will get here shortly. All right. We'll wait for Elisa. Yeah, just as long as her return flight isn't delayed. <sighs> <sighs> Musical notes. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Hey, what a thoughtful conversation you're having there. Been going on for a while? Yeah. No. Simka, please tell Moloch what this is. A present, right? Uh-huh. From Katya. And it's got a secret code right here, you see? <laughs> There's no secret on there. They're just notes. Musical notes. Ha! See? I told you. Those squiggles could have been music. I don't believe you. Come on, two people said the very same thing. Simka is not a people. She's a fixie. Anyway, there are two of us. You're ganging up on me. We're not ganging up on you, Nolik. Music is something you can play or listen to with your ears. But that's not all. You can also write it down. When we want to write down words, we use letters. And if we want to write down music, we use special symbols called musical notes. There are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and ti. The higher the sound, the higher the note sits on a set of five horizontal lines called a musical staff. Notes that look like this last longer, and notes like this are short, quick notes. Thanks to sheet music, people can read music like reading a book and then sing or play it. Until I hear you play me what you say is there, I won't believe you. On what? You know that we don't have any instruments. Try using spoons to play it. You think you're being funny? Hey, stop arguing. I know how we can play this song. We can use water. Water? Heh. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are you trying to play the music, or are you trying to wash it? That's right. Pour it in there, Tom Thomas. Some more. Hear how the sound changes? Uh-huh. Stop. Now, start pouring water in this next glass until you hear the note called T. Stop. You got it. Now pour here. Yeah, we still have one note left. And what do I do if my mom comes home? What do I say I'm doing? That you're learning to play music while you're washing the dishes. That's it. That's the high do. Now we have all the notes we need. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. Class. Go on, Tom Thomas, play. How about we all play it together? Musical sounds can be produced in a variety of different ways. Violins and cellos are played with a bow. When the bow is rubbed against the string, the string vibrates like it's shivering. And that produces a beautiful sound. A guitar also has strings, but they make sound when they are plucked. And inside a piano are special hammers that hit the strings when the piano player presses down on the keys. Instruments like trumpets, trombones, flutes, and pipes make sound when air is blown through them. That's why they call them wind instruments. There are even instruments that make sound when they are rubbed by a wet finger. Try wetting your finger and carefully moving it around the rim of a wine glass. With a little bit of practice, you'll hear a lovely sound. Are you two ready? Yeah. yeah! Great! All together now! I know Happy this! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tom Thomas! Happy birthday to, to me! We also wish you a happy birthday. You see, Nolik, and you didn't believe that this was music. But I was the first to guess which song it is. Hey, thanks so much for helping me figure out Katya's present. And how about sending a song to Katya? Yeah. 
We can write down the musical notes to a song about the Fixies. The Fixies? We can't. We can't write down the words, but if it's just the notes there, then it's no problem. Hooray! <laughs> Want to play it? Of course we do. See that? I'm just uh, training for school. You're the one that's doing all these twists and turns for fire. Hmm, me? It never even crossed my mind. No, like slow down. <sighs> Tula, why don't we go and play some chess? Don't you think that figure skating's beautiful? Turn me. Uh. How cool! <laughs> oh, why did you yell like that? I just got a pair of tickets to see the one and only Vector. <gasps> Splendid! And who's going with you? Actually, I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. What's there to think about? Just invite the most beautiful girl in our school, right? Yeah, not a bad idea, my friend. <laughs> Did you hear that? The most beautiful one will get invited. Well, I'm not even interested. And you know what? Neither am I. is full of beauty. There seems to be no end to the beautiful plants and animals and the gorgeous mountains, forests, and lakes. But even that's not enough for people. They create their own handmade beauty, too. Artists paint beautiful pictures. Composers write beautiful music. Architects create beautiful buildings. And fashion designers make beautiful clothes. Not even scientists stay out of it. They create beautiful ideas. These ideas can be the basis for the creation of new technologies that make people's lives better. Everyone has their own idea of what's beautiful. There are as many opinions as there are people. But everyone tries in their own way to be beautiful. Both people and fixies. Please help me, Tula. How can I become beautiful? Huh. I don't know. Go and ask Verda. Look at her. She's got it. What has she got? What's the most beautiful thing about her? Oh, well, her hairpin, her hairstyle. The green looks great on her. Green looks great. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, see you later. Hmm? Tula. Huh? What's your opinion? Fire, do you think he likes Simka? Looks like he does. Is it because she's a redhead? Orange? Hmm, now I get it. Well, is that close to her color? Not really. It needs more green. What makes a person really beautiful? Fancy clothing? Bright nail polish? Dyed hair? Those don't make you look your best. Here's a much more reliable recipe. First, wash off and comb your hair. See? You're looking more beautiful already. Now change those dirty and wrinkly clothes for clean ones. Huh? That's even more beautiful. And finally, if you eat less sweets and get plenty of exercise, then you'll surely become a handsome boy <laughs> or a gorgeous girl. Fire? What's up? Do you think you could get an autograph from Vector for me? You got it. I love his song so much. So do I. Especially that one that goes... Computer, 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 you are super. I play my computer and turn it up real loud. I play it all morning, all day, and through the nighttime. But no, 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 that's not allowed. <laughs> I had no idea you were such a fanatic. You know, I'm not going to get you his autograph. Why won't you? 
because you'll get it yourself. You know what I got? An extra ticket. <gasps> I thought you were going to take the most beautiful girl. All of you are beautiful, and you're the most fun to be around. Let's go. Stop! Hang on! Oh, Simka? Or is it Verda? Where are you going? What do you mean, where? To the concert! <gasps> mm. <gasps> mm. Verda? No, Simka. Or vice versa. I'm so confused. Come on, Tula. Can't you recognize them? This one's Simka, that one's Verda. Let's go, or we'll be late. Hmm. Blondes are always the lucky ones. Yeah. I guess we should have made our hair blonde like Tula's. The parrot. Adisa, do you want a cracker? Wow. Tom Thomas, who is that? Simka Nolik. This is Adisa. My dad brought him from Africa. <laughs> Talk? My dad said that he can, but I haven't heard him yet. Well, let's see if he can. Okay, say, Adisa's a good bird. No, he should learn my name. That would be awesome. Adisa, say, Nolik. That's my name. He doesn't want to talk about you, Nolik. Hmm, maybe he doesn't know how to speak human language. Check it out! It looks like he knows how to speak dog. No, no, like, he doesn't know any languages at all. Then how can he talk? Parrots can repeat many of the different sounds that they hear. For instance, a dog's bark or the ring of the phone. Parrots can also mimic words or even whole sentences of human speech. But parrots don't understand the meaning of the words they are saying. They just repeat them like a music player. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. That's why you won't be able to have a real conversation with a parrot, even if it's the kind of parrot that can talk. All right, then let's have him repeat something. Hey, Adisa, Tadish, it's the Fixie's special sign. Say it. Fixie's had a special sign. Tadish. <gasps> My dad is back. Let's hide, quickly. Hi there. Well, how's it going? You two talking to each other yet? I can't get him to say anything at all. You can't? Hmm. Adisa, how are you? This is a good parrot. <gasps> he wouldn't say anything before. Eh, he's used to talking around me. Adisa's a good parrot. Nolik, that's my name. Hmm? Whose name is Nolik? Uh, no. He was saying he's got no luck in this game. What kind of game? <laughs> Let's hide. Quickly, <gasps> hide. Uh, we were playing hide and seek. <laughs> With the parrot? Uh-huh. <sighs> Fixies have a special sign. <gasps> oh! Fixies have a special sign. Oh. What? Fixies? A special sign? Uh, no. It was physics. It's a special science. Uh, that's what we're studying about right now at school. You know how special oh. physics is. Wow, that's impressive. Um, well, keep up the good work, son. The ability to repeat what humans say is not something unique to only parrots. Crows, starlings, and other animals can do it too. And besides animals, there are also machines that can repeat human speech. For instance, when you call somewhere and hear, leave your message after the tone, what you're hearing is a voicemail machine using a recorded voice to answer the call. Another example is the voice on trains and buses that is used to announce the stops. Those voices are usually recordings that are repeated over and over. Today, there are also artificial voices on computers, tablets, and smartphones that can read text and say it out loud. But even if a machine knows what you are saying, it can't know why you are saying it. Only people can figure that out. And 
fixies, of course. Huh? Tom Thomas, you're a hero. You really wiggled your way out of that one. And Adisha, bad parrot. He almost gave up our secret. Be careful with that parrot. I get it. Adisa, listen, you. Forget everything we said. And don't ever say no look, okay? Yeah, nothing about the fixies at all. Yeah, so if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Got it? Oh, he's nodding. Looks like he understands. Let's get out of here so he'll forget about us as soon as possible. <laughs> So if you meet a fixie, please, don't let their secret out. Tadish, tadish, tadish. The frying pan. Woohoo! Can you do this? Easy. How about this? And voila! I could be on skates and still do it. If I was on skates, I could jump ten times in a row. Well, I could do a hundred with my eyes. Shut. Then let's see them. There's no skating rink. There will be. What will, will there be? A skating rink. Where? In the frying pan. Uh-oh. All right, my bragging buddies. Go get your skates. Fixies love playing sports. You might find Fixie adults working out with weights or maybe working on a gymnastics routine. Fixie kids love having Fixie board contests or taking part in parkour competitions where they have to run, jump, and hop over all sorts of obstacles. These kinds of competitions usually take place inside of sophisticated appliances. Orienteering is held inside these appliances too. That's when Fixies use a map to follow a complicated route. And the route is quite exact. You can't make one wrong turn. But the Fixie's favorite game has got to be hide-and-seek. Nobody can compete with them in this game. You don't believe me? <laughs> Watch! The rink is frozen. <laughs> so, who's first? Nola, come on! <laughs> well, are you going to jump? <laughs> wow, class! <laughs> and that's all? Not at all. No lick! No lick! No lick! No He's lick! not gonna make it. Too short a start. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anymore because I'm injured. Sure. Say no more, Mr. Braggart. Then it's your turn, Simka. Now watch and see how it's done. La 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 Oh, wow. Nolik, you never had a chance. Like always. She gets in my way, and now she's gonna win. Nolik, do you really want to beat her? Uh-huh. You see the salt? What? You think we should cook her? Of course not. But if we put some salt on the ice, it'll melt. Simka, didn't you say that you were gonna skate with your eyes closed? Piece of cake! What? Can't do it? Watch and learn. One. And two. Well done. And three. Hey, this is salt. That wasn't fair, guys. You wouldn't have done a hundred jumps anyway. Let's start the contest all over again. But this time we play by the rules. Oh. Look, there's a scratch in the pan. What? What a disaster. You can cook just about anything in a frying pan. Meat, fish, vegetables. 
In order to stop food from sticking to the pan, modern frying pans are covered with a non-stick coating like Teflon. You can cook in these pans without even using oil, and they're easy to clean. But you have to treat this kind of kitchenware very carefully. It's better not to use metal spatulas or forks that can scratch it, because you shouldn't cook food in a pan that has scratches on it. It can be really dangerous for your health. Yeah, this pan's completely shot. It's all because of your dumb bet. It's all because someone was cheating. Mom's back. Please, Simka, help me out, will you? I'll give you any wish you want. Or three. No, five. Five? <laughs> I can help you. If you guys jump up and down a hundred times on one leg, we could do two hundred. Tom Thomas, what do you say we make those crepes? Mmm, these crepes are perfect. I just love cooking with this pan. Why are you jumping? I want to make my legs stronger. <laughs> Anyway, you never could have jumped a hundred times in there. Bet on it? Uh-oh. <laughs> the movie. He fakes left. He shoots. Huh. Class! And can you do it backwards? Yeah, sure. <gasps> no way! What a shot! Huh. I wish Simka could see this. Why don't we make a movie for Simka about fire? We can use my fixie tub. It's got a camera. How come it's only for Simka? We'll make it for all of us. That's a great idea. I'll shoot the ball at the basket, and Nolik will do the filming. And what do we do? You can be whatever you want, like cheerleaders or the coaches. Yeah, a cheerleader. Help me in. Motion pictures, or movies, appeared more than 100 years ago after the invention of celluloid film. A movie is made up of a series of still photographs called frames. When you look at the frames quickly, one after another, the picture on the screen appears to move. It's hard to believe, but the first viewers got very scared when they saw a moving train on the screen. <laughs> At first, films were silent. Only later did people learn to make them with sound. And soon after that, people learned to make movies in full beautiful color. Movies aren't shot on film anymore. They're made with digital cameras. Today, almost all phones and tablets come with digital cameras inside of them. This makes it easy for just about anybody to make their own movie and share it with their friends. <laughs> Fire is the best. Ooh, he can shoot the best. Hey, I haven't turned the camera on yet. Get ready. Here we go. Yep. Fire is the best. Cut. I got it. Show me. Yep. Fire is the best. And where's the ball? It flew over there. That's not right. You have to see the ball flying in the picture. I got it. Get ready. You have us cheering. Nolik, you need to make sure we're all in the shot. Okay, I'll try. Shots and you do the filming. Fire can't even hit the basket. You try to hit the basket when everybody's bothering you. Oh, so it's our fault, hmm? Why don't you learn how to play? Are you fighting again? <laughs> We're shooting a film. Whoa! Can I see it? There's nothing for you to see. All I have is pieces. And not one is right. Don't worry. It's no problem. All it needs is editing. What does it need? <laughs> Movies are not usually shot all at once, just a piece at a time. And each of these pieces can be shot several times with the camera in different places. Then there's
There's plenty to choose from. After you're done shooting, you can take all of the best shots and put them one after another to make your movie. This process is called editing. Editing allows us to make movies that show things that could be impossible to shoot all at once. Well, let's see. For this first shot, we've got this cake over here. For the ball going in, we've got this one. And I like this one of me shooting. And don't forget to put in me and Tula. Of course not. So here's what we've got. Fire in the best movies! The film is super. Can I try to edit it? Yeah, go ahead. Now we have something to show to our teacher. And Digit, too. <laughs> and Papus and Masia. Look, I did my own editing in the movie. That's not true. It is so. With editing, it's just not fair, Nolik. Fire was able to put it in a hundred times without any editing. You sure didn't. Hey, guys, don't fight. Do you want me to teach you all the right way to shoot hoops? Yeah! All right, here we go. And shoot! Fire is the best. Oh, we can shoot the best. <laughs> the Masquerade. So, Tom Thomas, did you choose a costume for the New Year's party? Not yet. These are no good. I've been a pirate. How about a vampire? Did that. And a knight? Mm-hmm. This year, I... I want to do something that's original. And what if... I know what! You can go dress as me! As Nolik! Perfect! No one's ever gone as a fixie. Ever! Long, long ago, people would put on masks and dance in order to scare away evil spirits. In ancient theater, actors would change masks to play a few different roles. Everyone liked the idea of hiding their faces behind mysterious masks so much that people started organizing fun outdoor festivals called masquerades. There are countries around the world, like Brazil and Italy, that turn into one big masquerade ball during the holidays. Hey there, what are you making? A costume for a masquerade! Can you guess who I'm going as? Yeah, but why does it have to be Nolik? Because I came up with it! Fire'd be a much cooler costume! <laughs> That's not true! Stop arguing! I can go dress up as you and you! Now we're talking! <clears throat> Smart fixies wear glasses. <laughs> Your glasses are too small to even fit on his finger. They don't make glasses just like yours. What a cute fixie. Splendid. Not bad. Only if I were you, I'd add a backpack to your costume. Any fixie who's fashionable is wearing it. And maybe add my curls to it, please? Uh... If you don't, then our feelings will be hurt. Class! Did we cover everybody? Oh! We didn't include Simka! <gasps> and where are we going to find room for her? What can I do about it? I already got to get going. Then let's just not tell her. See you later, Tom Thomas. Thanks, guys. Tish! What have you been doing all this time while I was busy loading up the confetti? Uh, we were doing our homework. And looking at this magazine? And talking? Yeah, all of that and more. <laughs> That's got to be the worst lying ever. Tell me what you're hiding. Have you lost your mind? Sorry, but there was absolutely no room left on Tom Thomas. That's not what I'm talking about. What is the number one rule for fixies? Well, what did we promise? We, we won't, won't let out our secret. secret. Right, but you just let it out. Now everyone will know. Tom Thomas wouldn't tell anyone about us. I hope he doesn't. Well, maybe. Everyone will figure that he's dressed up like some nutty candy. What kind of nutty candy has a backpack on and glasses? We're in real trouble. I thought the glasses looked sharp. 
So what are we gonna do now? Call the professor, right? Or we should call Grampus or Papus. Ah! Don't panic. Let's wait till Tom Thomas gets back. There are many different types of masks, and some of them are very important. Medical masks are used by both doctors and sick people to reduce the spread of illnesses. Oxygen masks help people breathe. Fencers, hockey goalies, and boxers all use masks to protect their faces from being hit. The blue glass in a welder's mask is used to protect their eyes from dangerously bright light. Sea divers wear masks for swimming underwater. Without a mask, it would be very difficult to see the beauty of the underwater world. The masks that people wear at carnivals and parties? Well, they're just for having fun and putting everyone in a good mood. Or as a disguise, so that no one recognizes you right away. It can be a lot of fun to fool somebody like that. So how was it? It was great! They had a contest for costumes, and I won! Hooray, that's all. Say bye to us. <sighs> I hope you won't be upset, guys. But I couldn't tell anyone that I was a fixie. Here's all I could think of. Grand prize for best costume, robotic toucan! Hey, come on! Do you think we look like toucans? Yeah? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! 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 <laughs> All right there, fixie toucans. We've got work to do. Oops. Happy New Year. 